when Clemson and Georgia take the field, what is going to be the key matchups we're looking for for Georgia's offense against Clemson's defense? These are the two best units on the field in a good time. We're going to give you the keys to the game on this one next, Locked on Bulldogs. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. Today's episode brought to you by 5-Hour Energy. Use the code Locked On CFB to get 20% off your order at 5hourenergy.com. He is Clint. I am Daniel. Welcome to the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. So happy that you're here. Thank you for being an everydayer, an everyday listener tuning into the podcast. We're here every day. We know you're here every day, and we really appreciate you greatly um, excited to get into another breakdown of this game on Saturday, Clint. We are now just a handful of days away um, from seeing the dogs out there on the field. A reminder, we'll be back tomorrow um, talking about um, some last-minute thoughts about the game. We'll be back on Thursday giving out our locks, our official predictions. Friday, yeah. excited, nervous, don't sleep on all of those things coming your way. And then Saturday, Clint, when the game is wow. over, yeah, the overreaction show is just getting started. If you're new to the community, tell them. We'd love for you to understand that we did not title it the overreaction show because we will be measured and tempered in our thoughts and feelings concerning the game or its outcomes. If you guys thought that we got off the rails at all during the offseason. OK, well, tell them about something else. Buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Because the rails are long gone in the overreaction episode. Come back Saturday immediately after game for that one. We'll be back for that. Uh, we're going to be back every single day during the season, plus that one. Daniel, tell the people, as we look at this offense and this offense for Georgia and the defense for Clemson, um, you and I are both on record of saying this is where the game will will tip momentum one way or another i think our defense clemson's offense i i think we have the upper hand there it's going to be there are a lot of unknowns on both we need to see a resurgent georgia defense we're not proven there yet from last year yeah, yeah, yeah. but we are proven on offense and we got a lot of playmakers coming back turns out clemson's got a lot of defensive guys back and our playmakers and are great so just kind of big overall vision uh, tell us what tell us what your initial feels big time big big casting vision are for that matchup. Um, uh, yeah, I will tell you that, um, and also remind you that if you're watching here on YouTube, the background has been correct the entire time. It's not new. It was the it's it's the same as it's been. You must have been seeing things earlier, Zach, when you were looking at it. And so look again. We got that taken care of. Clemson's. Um, Clemson's defensive unit, um, I want to say this, and I mean, I genuinely mean this in the most positive way that I could possibly mean it. With all due respect. No, that's not what I'm, that I'm, it's not a with all due respect. Okay, good. Clemson's defense is old and the, in the best kind of way. This is an experienced yeah. group. When you look at the two deep up and down the roster, like it is just senior, senior, junior, junior, senior, senior, graduate student, graduate student, junior, couple of sophomores thrown in there that are really talented kids. This is up and down the two deep. You have got now there are some talented freshmen, obviously, that are coming sure. in. People are excited about Sammy Brown. People are excited about I mean, Clemson yeah. been recruiting really well, got a lot of guys that they think are going to be able to you know, potentially come in for him and, and make a difference like right away. But boy, that too deep for the most part, Clint is set and they are set with yeah. some really experienced guys that have played a lot of very meaningful football. And so I will tell you this, there is nothing about the talent of the Georgia offense, about the poise of the Georgia offense, about the efficiency of the Georgia offense that, will rattle this Clemson defense in no. the least. They will not be overmatched. They will not be um they will not be out of their depth. No. They might be out schemed. They might be outplayed, but they will not be 
out of their league in terms of the actual matchup. Um, and I think the unit, I mean, I don't think the unit is obviously led by the linebacking core, which you yes. know people are saying might be the best linebacking core in all of college football. Barrett Carter is an absolute animal. Um, yeah, he, is. He, he is very good. Wade Wood as is also very good. Um, the kid, Jamal Anderson, he was a freshman last year. He, he's a sophomore this year and he is, he's one of the younger pieces of that defense, but is also very talented. A lot of exceptional, a lot of pieces. The, the defensive front is maybe a little bit less flashy, a little bit less well known. I mean, I feel like Clemson's had some of the best defensive lines in recent memory in all of college football over the last 10 plus years. Yeah. Certainly, I don't think holds a candle to any of those units. Like it's not Grady Jarrett walking through that door, but it is a really solid front seven. I think the big questions on this unit, if we're going to back to what we did yesterday, in my mind, the big questions on this unit are on the back end, particularly at corner, not yes, necessarily sir. safety. If you look at um if you look at the corners now, like you've got Terrell, and I know Clemson fans are gonna be like, questions at corner. We got one of the best corners in college football, Terrell, fine player. Who's going to play opposite him? And then who are the other guys? Like who's the third Let's guy? See. A fourth, who's coming in? And this is where I said this yesterday, Clint. I'll be curious as your thoughts. I think in some respects it's good you get Clemson week one because I think some of these freshmen, especially on the wide receiver position, come along. But I'm just going to tell you this right now. Late in the year, there's a chance Clemson's secondary could be an absolute shambles because they just ain't got the dudes back there. And so somebody gets banged, no. somebody gets nicked up. Now, it's game one, so you probably don't need more than two corners. You could probably roll with two corners this whole sure. And Clemson's going to try to because, like, it, it's probably Jaden Lucas, I guess, is the other corner. And then mm -hmm. I don't know where they're going to go after that. I, like, freshman, a, a freshman, true freshman, not redshirt freshman, true yeah. freshman coming in. God help that. you if you're thinking about playing a true freshman at corner in this game. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, no. Did you see what happened there, Georgia fans? Well, it, it was, it, it it was just us got that time. Um, I, I do think it, the depth in the secondary is probably the biggest concern of this unit, but Clemson's got a a formidable, experienced, veteran defense yes. led by that linebacking core, which um, is going to make them a tough out for the Georgia offense. It really, really is. We're going to come back after these. I'm going to give you my thoughts. The matchup I'm most interested to see, but first this. And this is, in fact, 5-Hour Energy. Daniel, mm -hmm. I love 5-Hour Energy because we have lots of things in our life that necessitate, nay, demand that we are on our A-game most of the time. I can time. think of five right off the top of my head. Right, and we need every bit of energy for those things. Uh, mm -hmm. We get tired after lunch, and we go ahead and reach for that 5-Hour Energy that lets you know that over 70% of us hit that wall. You're not alone. That's why you need the 5-Hour Energy to help you get over that wall instead of crashing into it. What about before you work out? Want to get in shape but having trouble staying motivated? Make 5-Hour Energy shots part of your lifestyle and get energy boost that you need to get fit. We all know that sometimes you want to go to the gym. Take a 5-Hour Energy shot to give you the feeling and alertness so that you can go to the gym and here's the reality with no sugar a convenient portable size it's a perfect pick me up for getting stuff done the five hour energy website has flavors galore like watermelon tropical burst grape berry and more there's a flavor for everyone try them all on the site you can even have the options build your own 12 or 24 pack you choose the flavor and it's delivered right to your door if you go to fivehourenergy.com that is the number five ourenergy.com and get some five hour energy products today you can use my promo code locked on cfb to receive 20 percent off your order this is only valid through september 20 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders. Go to fivehourenergy.com today. Daniel, you did All a right. good job, I think, talking about the seniority of this Clemson defense, which yep. it, it's there. Like you can't, I, I think toe to toe against Georgia's experience that there are snaps here if we had you know our, our boy uh, dog stats on here and he was to snap out which which he has go over to his twitter feed at dog stats if he was to get all of those snap counts out clemson defense has a lot of snaps and not just snaps good snaps well recorded well graded snaps daniel uh, yeah. the linebackers are in fact the beasts 
of this defense. They roam around. They fly around. They are tough as nails. They hit. They're good, y'all. The yeah. the thing I am most interested in seeing okay. is, in fact, not our offensive line against the defensive line. I think, quite honestly, we're going to be just fine handling their defensive line. Their defensive line doesn't have the top end crust that really scares me about that. Now, now maybe they have a guy flash in a couple of unheralded guys, a couple of freshmen red shirts who come in and get off the edge, but they're not, they're not terrifying me. That's not where I'm looking at this defense. I am looking at, Hey, Tate Ratledge, are you the best guard in all of college football? And can you do a two, one combo and get off and up to the second pop level? Off. Pop off that first guy. I Give need me on that, that second guy. That's where I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be looking at the line play very early on. i am be looking at blitz pickup. From the linebackers because they're going to be sending them. I'm going to be looking on two oh, on one sure. combo blocks, reaching out, getting to the second level. Because y'all, I, I don't know if you're ready for this. If you if you really understood and and wrapped your mind around our running back depth chart to begin the game. Oh, is okay. it is it uh, substantially deep? I was going to bring this up later, but we might as well get there now. Let's let's do it now. The name Cash Jones is known to you. And if it's not known to you because you don't remember him being recruited, that's a you problem because he, he may lead the play. team in carries this week. That's not a joke. That's not. No, he may lead the team in carries this week. I don't know what Branson's like workload limit is going to be. And Rod's on, not going to play. Do, do you know, listener? Do I know? Do, no, no one knows. But Branson and Kirby Smart and Bobo. No. Roderick's not going to play. Nope. ETN is likely going to be suspended for the for the game. Are we going to turn to the freshman? Are we going to turn to Nate Frazier? Like, is that what we're going to do in this game? Okay. What what comes after Branson? It, the answer is Cash Jones. Yeah. And so, um, running back depth might it is not might be is a legitimate concern. I think for this Georgia offense going into Week One. So if that is a concern, which it is, I'm going to need a exceptional blocking up front because Cass Jones, I love you. Glad you're here. And you are Kirby's going to trust you with it. Uh, Nate Frazier, love Dylan Bell. We might see another one of those oh, sightings. Lord. If those happen, they, they are not the same as ETN. They're not the same as Roderick. They're not Ooh. even close. Okay. Okay. The monster's not as scary when it only has one head. You understand? Like the three-headed monster that it's is this terrifying. backfield is terrifying. But when the monster's only got one head, it's just not as threatening. And that's George's backfield. This and game. so I'm going to need that line of scrimmage moved up to the second level. Daniel, I need people yeah. occupying. Go ahead and I, just... need, I need Cash Jones falling forward after three, four yards, not getting stopped at the sure, line of scrimmage. Sure, 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 and sure, where sure, you sure, stop sure, that, sure, sure, it's sure. second level of getting on those linebackers, not in the pass game and 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 not in the screen game, not in coverage, but uh, you're, you're going to have to tight ends. This is where Oscar Delp, show me something. Don't don't just show me. You just want to catch balls. Go out. You're sick. Go, go out and show me a thing or two that you can crack down. Aforementioned Dylan Bell, if you're not playing running back, go ahead and come on motion and crack on down and go to the second level. If we have that, if that's where my eye goes first quarter and linebackers being occupied and not running free, ooh, I feel extraordinarily happy with our chances to win this game in, in ex spectacular fashion. Let me ask you a question here, and then I'm going to get to the matchup I'm looking forward to in that I'm going to be most watching in the third segment. But let me ask you a question here, because we brought it up, and we maybe we'll get to this later in the week, and you know maybe we'll hear you know we'll hear some things, and we'll you know we'll make some more observations. Full full we reserve the right to change our opinions as Absolutely. we always do on this podcast. Yeah. We do it quite often. Do you think that there's a chance? I'm not going to say gets away from the run game here because I don't think you'll ever mm. see that under mm. Kirby Smart. But do you think that Mike Bobo at some point in this game is like, I got the best quarterback in college football. I'm playing a virtual home game. 70, 30 split is my predicted prediction uh -huh. for what the stadium looks like. And I got a bevy of wide receivers and options and tight ends that I can go to. And I got an offensive line that can pass block. Like, like they're walking in their sleep, like they're not even without even yeah. thinking twice. Yeah. Do you think at some point Mike Bobo says, I'm tired of running Cash Jones off right tackle for two and a half yards? 
we're just going to let Carson get back there and rip it around a little bit. Like, do you think we see a little bit more of that than normal, given the circumstances of running back here? Um, I'll tell you a more likely scenario before that. And and okay. this is contingent. The most likely out of the of two options that I'm now making are Frazier gets a bulk of the work. You see him go through a quarter of seeing what he can do. If we go through a quarter, it's not going to be quick. It's not going to be two drives. It's going to be a quarter of us getting just it might be even a quarter and a half of not getting a run game established. I think Frazier comes in to, to take those reps. And if that's not the case, then I think the next option is to say, all right, adjustment. Hey, Carson, let's go to work. Let's get Dylan Bell on the outside. Let's get Arian Smith. I don't think it's the first option. Kirby Smart does not do that. He, again, Kentucky, Daniel, how does Kentucky game go every single time? Uh, here's my here's my problem. And, and I don't disagree with anything you said. I think if you're a Georgia fan, you might. I know Kirby Smart doesn't feel this way. I do think there are some Georgia fans out there that maybe feel this way. And I'm just here to tell you, I don't think this is a let's just experiment with our running backs and see what there is type of game for Georgia. Interesting. I think Clemson will come out and beat you if you're not ready to go. Like, I don't, this is a, we haven't, we'll get to our official predictions on Thursday. We both think Georgia is going to win this game, but make no mistake. Yes. This is a losable game for the university Absolutely. of Georgia. This is a, like if you come out here and mess around with a true freshman running back for a quarter and he turns out to not know how to hit a hole, like you, you're going to be, you're going to all of a sudden find yourself in a really difficult spot where you're maybe down in the fourth quarter and you've got to sling it around with the Carson back. So, I don't think you can let it get to that point if you're Kirby Smart. I know they will have a game plan. It's not like they don't know who the running backs that are going to be available are. It's not like they're going to be like, oh, no, ETN suspended. Nobody told us. Like, So they they have a plan. They're, they're going to figure that out. I will be interested to see what that plan is. And it kind of parlays into the thing, the matchup that I will most be we watching go. for we when we get uh, back from telling you about these. Is in fact ultimate GM head coaching experience on your fingertips because you get to play as Kirby Smart. Lockdown Bulldogs fans, you want to take a moment, give you a heads up, brand new mobile game. You're going to love ultimate football head coach. Recruiting players, hiring staff, overseeing training camps is what you get to do and handling scholarships. You control every crucial detail of your program. It's all in your hands. Will you be able to do it? Maybe uh, a certain uh, beat writer in Athens is downloading this game, and he is just revoking scholarships at his will. He has just taken scholies for. As a guy was going fifty-two and a forty-five, and yep. like just take a scholarship away. Well, you could do that, I guess, if you're really petty, or you can actually build a program and a dynasty. And here's what we really love about mm. the game: you're responsible for calling offensive plays during the games. Your strategy will not only determine the success of the football season, but will shape the future and legacy of your program. Ultimate college football head coach is completely free. No ads, 100% playable. On Offline, you can play on the go and we and when and where you want. Download the game. Just visit ultimate-cfb.com, ultimate-cfb.com, or look it up in the app stores. Ultimate college football head coach. Begin your coaching legacy today. Daniel, I gave you the linebackers against our offensive line, tight ends, and wide receivers in the blocking game because they need to get on the second level to give room for our depleted running back core to go ahead and have something. You parlayed that into saying you don't think this is going to be an experimental time. You think we know the running Kirby Smart knows what he has in run game. He might be leaning on Carson Beck a little bit more, open up that playbook just a little bit, or lean heavily in the past game, which you said parlays into your matchup. What matchup are you looking for most of all? I am going to be looking at, other than the turnover battle, what is by far the most important matchup when any offense is on the field versus any defense, and that is red zone efficiency. How does Georgia do in the red zone versus how well is Clemson able to defend the red area of the field? I think we both think that Georgia is going to be able to move the ball against yeah. this Clemson Tigers football team, Georgia's just too talented to get absolutely stymied in this game. Carson Beck is too good of a quarterback. Mike Bobo is too good of a play caller. Yeah. Georgia's too talented across the board to get absolutely shut down in this game. He's going to have all day to throw. You look at Clemson's defense from like their numbers from last year, and I know it's not a perfect carryover. They did lose some guys in the secondary. They were in the top 10 in 
passing yards per game allowed. And so I know I mentioned I thought corners were going to be an issue. Terrell is back, and that's a group that performed very well the secondary did last year. Top 20 in rushing yards per game and rushing yards per play allowed. Um, Number eight in the country in total defense. By the way, Georgia was nine last year. Clemson was eight in total defense. defense that's what I'm saying statistically. Yeah, I'm not saying that. The numbers are saying that. Thank you, you Daniel. You're, you're making things up. I'm just telling you what the numbers are. Eighth in total defense. Um, ninth in the nation in yards per play defense. Mm -hmm. So you look across the board. Um, I'm not breaking any news here. This Clemson Tigers defense was a very good unit. Now, you look at the Clemson Tigers season that they had last year. Was mm -hmm. it a very good season, Clint? Like, did they have, was it a very impressive team that old Dabo Sweeney fielded um, there on um, on the, the, the plains of South Carolina? Unequivocally, no. No, it was not. So why not, I wonder... It could be because they were 68th in the country in red zone defense. Well, that's when not Clemson great. got in the red zone, somehow, some way, this ultra talented unit led by guys like Barrett Carter, led by guys like Avion Terrell, just hemorrhaged touchdowns. Now, where is the lack of depth? at the running back position going to become most apparent for Georgia in this game. I think it's going to be in the red zone. The field compresses in the middle of the field. Carson Beck is going to have his again. He's going to have all day in the pocket. And so he's going to be back there just picking people off, just waiting for guys mm -hmm. to break free and get open so he can hit them in stride. But the field compresses down in the red zone. There's fewer windows. There's fewer throwing lanes. They, they heat up the pressure. If you can't run the ball in the red area, when you want to run the ball in the red area, you will not succeed in the red area. And so this to me is like, I don't know. We, we talk about Georgia's season, and we have talked about Georgia's season, and we've gone on and on about it. But to me, you talk about, well, I think Georgia's better than this team, or I think Georgia will be favored over this team, I think whatever. Georgia was better than Alabama last year. I think yep. I think everybody knows that. No. Except everybody. Alabama fans. <laughs> everybody doesn't know that. No, you're right. I think all sensible people know that. Thank you. It, But Georgia lost the game, and that's all that matters. You... To me, this whole season is just going to be a handful of games. Georgia's not going to absolutely dominate their opponents. You have to win those games. Now, I think this is a game that could be one of those games this year. Now, Georgia could come out and dominate. I think that's a possible outcome. But I think this game could be a back-and-forth, tightly contested affair. And if you get in one of those games, executing in the red zone, and not turning the ball over becomes yep. literally how you win the football game. And so that's going to be the matchup, I think, when Georgia's on offense, exacerbated by the lack of depth on the running back position. What will Carson Beck in this offense, led by Mike Bobo, be able to do in the red zone? That's exactly right. Uh, the middle of the field is going to be important. Safeties for Clemson, I don't think, have the skill. They have the experience, um, not necessarily the skill for it. It could be that on the first drive, we just throw seams and tight Oscar Delp, Eurosic, uh, London Humphreys up the middle um, of the of the field will be open. I think. Can I get a prop for Georgia first drive touchdown? Do you think FanDuel has that prop? 100% they do. And I okay. would take that. I'm taking it. 100%. Georgia first possession it. touchdown. I'm taking Mike Bobo. It. If you're telling me Mike Bobo and Kirby Smart and company have time to script with the this script has been in the team. bank for six months with this team surgical Guys. Carson Beck has the script memorized backwards and forwards. He could execute it in his sleep. It's only right now. Give me that. I first give drive me the opening drive touchdown by our next episode. I will let you know the exact odds of the first drive touchdown and where you can make the bet. No, the field is going to be open. I think for Georgia to exploit, if we can get there, if the linebackers don't get back in coverage. And I think if our run game is established, then the game that that's the most likely outcome from a dominant performance aspect. Our run game is cooking. Cass Jones and the offensive line are doing its thing. And uh, 
Robinson is, is back from injury enough. Nate Frazier has given us enough. Where now we're hitting our shots with Dylan Bell, uh, with Arian, and and things are going. That's that's where things get sideways for Georgia or for uh, Clemson in a hurry. He is Daniel. I'm Clint. This is Locked On Bulldogs. We'll be back every single day this week, gearing up for Clemson and back on Saturday night for the overreaction special, which is my favorite episode to record by far. Uh, oh, we will see far. you guys then. See ya.